All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, today, we're going to be focusing more on the quadratic formula. So this is our second day talking about the quadratic formula. So today, we're going to kind of start to put in some of those details and hopefully build some more understanding with this. So in this first problem, we're going to be asked a couple of different things. First thing we're going to be asked for is the formula. We're going to be asked to simplify while showing our work, and then we're going to be asked for our final answers. One thing you may notice is that on the bottom of your sheet, we've already included the formulas written out for you and um, what the possible answers are. This is a good way for you to check your work right now as we're kind of going through. So my plan is I think I'm going to do problems one, two, and three. Well, maybe not. Maybe let's switch that up. I'm going to do one, three, and five, and I'm going to save problems two, four, and six. And then on the back page, we have a couple more problems that are just more of those like traditional level problems. So first thing we're being asked to do is we're being asked to figure out the formula. So remember, this is A, this is B, and this is C. We need to figure out the proper formula that works. Now, when you think about the quadratic formula, the quadratic formula is something that you should be committing to memory. It is negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So in this situation, it's really, when I'm trying to identify it like matching wise, I guess I'm really probably looking at B and A as like two numbers to start with. So if my B right here is a positive four, then I know that I will have a negative four sitting right there because that negative will pop in. So I'll have a negative four out front. So maybe let's just look down here to see if I have any of those. And hopefully pretty quick we can identify, yep, I do right here. So this is most likely the one that we are talking about. I'm gonna pull it up there and we'll look at it a little bit closer. So pulling that up, we have that negative four out front and then it is our B squared minus four times A, which is seven, so that works out, times C, which is negative five, all over two A, everything works out. This must be the correct one. So that's kind of our first part is just to identify that we can get the right formula. Obviously, if you're actually solving a problem like this, you're going to have to sit there and plug in those numbers. Now it does say it wants us to simplify and show our work. So we have our negative four out front, plus or minus. I think the easiest piece to actually simplify is the discriminant, which is in here, right? And remember that tells us a little bit about the solutions we're gonna get. So coming over here, you're gonna wanna grab a calculator. We're gonna evaluate the inside portion of the square root, and we're gonna type it in exactly like we see it. So we have the parentheses, we square it, minus four, parentheses, seven, parentheses, negative five. And when I hit enter on my calculator, that's gonna work that out perfectly for me. Now, we do know that this is inside the square root, so while we're here, let's take the square root of that number. So there it is, 12.49 if we round that up. So I'm gonna get rid of all of this, I'm gonna replace it with 12.49. And this is all over two times seven, which is 14. Now, this is actually pretty darn close to where we're gonna have our final answer showing up here for us. So I'm just gonna move my calculator over there. So now in order to get our final answer, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna type out the top, remember with the plus or minus, I normally do the plus first, you could do the minus first. We're gonna do two situations, one with a plus, one with a minus. So we're gonna do negative four plus 12.49 and be sure to hit enter right now. And then after that, we're gonna divide that answer by 14. So we will get x equals 6.0, oh I'm sorry, just read that wrong, 0.60, six, so that six is probably gonna round us up to a one. And we'll get our answer right there. Now for the second answer, we're gonna use the minus. So we're gonna do negative four. Now instead of the plus, we do minus 12.49. Get that answer, divide that answer by 14, and we get a negative 1.18. It looks like it'll round to x is equal to 1.18. So looking down here, we can check our work just by seeing if the right answer is down here. And actually right here, we can see that exact answer that we had just written out. So that means we did this problem correctly. So 
I'm just going to put the little A in the box to say that that's the one that that matched up to. So we've used this one and we've used this one. Let's take a look at the second problem. So in the second problem, um, and by second I really mean the third problem, that's the one I'm going to do. Remember, if you don't see something in, in front of one of your variables, you can put a 1 there to hold the spot. So A is equal to 1, B is equal to 11, and C is equal to 10. Now I do know that my quadratic formula starts out with a negative B up front. So if B is equal to 11, I'm going to see if there's one that has a negative 11. And it looks like I do have that one right over here. So again, I'm going to just copy this and put it up here in the box. Like so. There it is. Okay. So. Now, when we come over here and we try to evaluate this, remember what we did the last time. We keep the negative 11 out front, the plus or the minus stays out front. We do simplify the bottom, so two times one is two. Now, the biggest piece of simplifying the quadratic formula is always the inside, and then when we get done figuring out the inside, we're gonna take the square root of that. So, going to our calculator now, Again, type it out exactly like you have it in there. It's very important to get this part right. So 11 to the second power minus 4 times 1 times 10. And when I hit enter, I get 81. Now we cannot forget that that 81 is technically inside the square root because we've not taken the square root of it yet. So second square root 81 is of course 9 in this situation so I'm going to get rid of the square root and now I have 9. Alright so once we get to this spot now we just got to get our two values. So negative 11 plus 9 get that answer divide that answer by the bottom so divided by 2 and we get x equals negative 1 and then take negative 11 we did the plus already so now we're going to do the minus we get negative 20 divided by 2, and we get negative 10. So x equals negative 1, x equals negative 10. Let's check that work. There we have it right here for f. So we have it right here. So f is our correct answer for that one. Let's do one more of these type together, and I'll save the other ones for you. Looking at problem number 5. Now this one's a little bit more difficult than the other ones because all of your terms are not on the same side. So when they're not on the same side, it is your job to rearrange them. So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract the 3x over to the other side, and we're also going to subtract the 4 over to the other side. So that will give us 2x squared minus 3x minus 4 and since both of these canceled out, there's nothing left, so we say equals zero. In this situation, we can see a is two, b is three, and c, or I'm sorry, b is negative three, and c is negative four. Now, let's go find the appropriate one. Um, actually, one thing to note, when we do these, we can identify a, b, and c whenever it is equal to zero. If it is not equal to zero, you need to rearrange and get everything on the same side before you can do that. So, looking for a b, so okay, so our b value is negative three here, so since it's the quadratic formula starts out with a negative b, it's gonna be like a negative negative. Two negatives are going to make a positive. So we need something that has a positive three out front and it looks like it's this guy right here. So let's grab that guy. We'll double check it a little bit more when we get up top. Come on, there we go. Shrink her down a little bit. Okay, so negative B, so right, my negative three over here would turn to a positive three, plus or minus. Now I'm gonna square the original B value which is a negative three. So negative three squared minus four times two. Two is our A value, so I'm feeling pretty good. And times C, which is negative four, and that's what I see over here as well. So we definitely picked the right one, which is good. So I think we picked this one already, just to make your lives easier. And then we picked the one over here already. 
you're only gonna have three choices left for the remaining problems. Now, again, when we come over here to simplify this, remember to keep the first number the same here. Two times two on the bottom is gonna give us four. Now, let's figure out the number that's in the square root, and once we figure out that number, then what we're going to do is actually square root it. So, looking at what is inside right here, we're gonna have parentheses negative three to the second power. This is where it's extremely important. You just type it in exactly like you see it. So negative four times two times negative four. Hit enter, we get 41. Now technically 41 is what is inside the square root right now. So let's take a look at the square root of 41 and we find out that that is 6.40, 6 6.40. So coming over there, we can erase this, 6.40. Actually, we don't even need the zero at that point because it rounds, but we'll keep it there for a minute. So now coming over here, we're gonna have three plus 6.40 divided by four, and we get x equals 2.35. And then we're gonna have three minus 6.40, divide that by four, and we're gonna get x equals negative 0.85. So let's see if we got an answer that matches to that. Looks like we do right here for C, so C will be our answer over here. Now again, I just took you through the first three problems, one, three, and five, so that's gonna save um, the even numbered problems for you. I do wanna look at one problem on the back. So let's do problem number seven together. Um, this one doesn't have the support. So this one is all about what you actually know. So coming over here, we are gonna say that we, well, first off, we don't have everything on the same side. So we need to pull everything onto the same side. So let's pull everything over onto the side with the X squared. So we're going to add five X to both sides that will make these two cancel out, and then we're gonna subtract seven from both sides. So when I do that, I'm gonna have one x squared plus five x minus seven equals zero. Now, coming over here, at this point, we need to come and we need to figure out our a, our b, and our c, which is relatively easy. And now when I do this, I like to tell kids to just start by actually writing out a blank quadratic formula. So it's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c all over two times a. Now it is extremely important that when you do this, you put everything up here in its own set of parentheses so that this gets evaluated correctly. So in this problem, B, let's even highlight this, B is equal to a positive five. So anywhere I see a B, I'm gonna put a positive five. Now I put B right there, that is a positive five, but that negative was sitting in front, so that negative will still affect it. We don't change that part. Right here we had another B, so I'm gonna put another positive five. Now A in this situation was one, so wherever I see A, or A, I'm gonna put one, and last but not least, I get to the C, which is negative seven, so that's gonna go in the parentheses where the C was. Now let's just run through and simplify this. So just like we were doing before, we're gonna focus on this, and then we're gonna square root it. So we're gonna end up with negative five plus or minus. Now we come over, five to the second power. Well, hold on, let me do my parentheses. So five to the second power minus four times one, times negative seven, and we get 53. That is what is inside the square root right now. Now we don't want the square root, so let's get rid of that too. So I'm gonna do second square root of 53, and that's where I get my decimal, which is 7.28, 7.28. Now on the bottom, we do have two times one, which is two. So let's go and get our answers right now. So remember, we're gonna get two answers, x equals and x equals negative five plus 7.28, divide that by two, we get 1.14.
and then we get negative 5 minus 7.28 divide that by 2 and we get 6 or negative 6.14 so let's go look for those answers because those answers are at the bottom 1.14 negative 6.14 here it is H this one goes with H so I think that was actually one of the problems I planned on saving for your homework but that's okay this would be a free answer if you watch the full video Thank you guys so much for watching this whole thing. If you have any questions, please be sure to reach out to me. Thanks, guys. Have a nice day.